Let's go outside, the snow is falling down And every child is having so much fun The snowman is twice the size as me With a smile as quirky as mine We're holding hands to keep each other warm While we stand and watch a choir perform And all the Christmas songs that we love Get yeah, all the Christmas songs that we love and in a while we're gonna go inside and drink our chocolate by the fire Cause all I want is to spend this day with you Let me give you a Christmas A moment we'll fill with love and joy mm -mm, so Hello everybody and welcome to the vlog. It's Jess here with Blush Jess. Thank you so much for watching. Today is Vlogmas Day 20. One. <laughs> 21, I believe. And it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, Mark, okay, you guys all want to know a Mark sleep update if you watched yesterday's video. He did wake up a couple times in the night in one, like an hour stretch. <sighs> it wasn't awful, but it wasn't ideal. So we're just going to keep working on it. I do think he still has teeth coming in. He's back there and he's like, let's go. So we're in the car this morning because we're going to run to Walmart. We're going out of town in two days. Um, so for a few days to be with David's mom and dad. And um, I need to get some things. It's also my niece's birthday the day after mine, which my birthday's tomorrow. So um, her birthday's on Saturday. So I want to get her a card and probably a gift card. She's turning tw 11. She's turning 11. So um I thought it might be fun to get her a gift card and we're going to get some things. I'm, I kind of want to make taco soup tonight. It is cold. It's like in the thirties and I have my new jacket on that I got for my birthday, even though I, I ordered it for myself and it came yesterday. Um, I really needed a jacket and this is a really nice warm jacket from Land's Inn. It's probably not the most flattering jacket because it's really heavy duty, but it is so, so warm. So anyway, um, we're headed out. Mark's got on a little vest and he hates, he hates the way it like comes up on his face. He does not like hats. He does not like hoodies. <laughs> so I'm trying to keep him warm. But anyway, we're going to go do that. Get him out of the house a little bit. So he'll take a good nap. He already took a small morning nap because he got up so early this morning. But, um, anyway, we're going to go run to Walmart and um, we'll see you guys back in a little bit. So just let's start the day and we'll carry you along with us. Okay, we just got to Walmart, but I need to have a little talk. I need to have a little talk. So uh, I just got a comment. It wasn't a mean comment. I'm not upset at the person who commented. But because this person had a question, I thought we might need to talk about it. Maybe somebody else has the same question and they're afraid to ask it. Which, never be afraid to ask it. Especially if it's in a respectable respectful, nice, you know, compassionate way, I will answer it. Um, her question was like, why do you always describe Nate as having autism? Like, why don't you use other descriptions? Why is it always about his autism? And she even used the word like a word instead of just saying autism. Okay. This is just my opinion and other people may have a different opinion and that's fine. Autism is not a bad word. Autism is not a bad word. I will continue. The only reason I talk about autism in my videos is to share awareness, to show other moms that if your kid's diagnosed with autism, they can still be happy, healthy, wonderful people. Um, autism does not even come close to describing everything that Nate is. It's one small part of him. It's the way he learns and experiences the world differently. However, when I am posting a video and there is over a thousand people, and I know that's not a lot for a video, but usually my videos get about a thousand clicks. Um, not every single one of those people knows us and knows our story. It could be a mom that just got, had their kid diagnosed. It could be a mom that's afraid of that word. And I want to try to show normal C with autism. There are so many videos out there that show the negative, horrendous, bad meltdowns and all the things. And honestly, that stigma is ridiculous. And 
it led to a lot of fear in my heart when we had Nate diagnosed because Mm -hmm. you don't see a lot of, I know there are more and there are amazing autism channels out there. And my channel is not autism focused, but I use the word autism when I talk about Nate, especially like in the beginning of the video, if I mention my kids, I'll mention that Nate has autism because in my hope, there's going to be another mama out there that needs to see a kid with autism. And maybe your kid doesn't have autism, but you, you will experience someone in your day, in your month, in your year that does. And because of our family, you understand it a little bit better or you, um, anyway, the only thing I want to say is autism is not a bad word in our house. Um, even family has asked me like, Oh, did, did you mind that I shared that he had autism? Like, no, like to me, it's the same as sharing that he has blonde hair and he is in size 10 clothing. It's just a description. It's not who he is. It's not anything like that. It's just a way he learns and experiences the world differently. And I will continue every day to help spread awareness of that. Do we have bad days? Yes. I try not to show a lot of that. And I do show some because I want to I want other people to know there's hope. There was a time where Nate would not get his haircut. And it was like, I have a video crying about it. Like we had to leave the salon and stuff like that. But guess what? Now I can share with y'all that he does. Like we grow and we learn and we have bad days. We have really great days. Um, But isn't that every kid? Like, isn't that every single family? So I'm not upset to the person who left the comment. It was a good conversation starter. And it's, I think it's based on a lot of misinformation and, and people viewing autism as a bad word. And, and she even used the word a word instead of autism. Like he has autism. And honestly, I was so scared of that diagnosis when he was diagnosed at age three. He's now eight. Five years ago, he was diagnosed and I was terrified of that word, but that word helped us understand Nate better. It helped us get him therapy. It helped us get him help. It helped his teachers be able to understand how to teach him. That word brought about so much help and support for our family. So that word is not a bad word. Um, And as long as I have this channel, I will continue to beat the drum. Please do not view autism as a death sentence as a, our life is now ruined of any of that. I get such ignorant comments and ignorant, not in those people are stupid. It's that they just don't know any better. And I'm here. Maybe I should talk about it more to say, if your kids have autism, they can still be wonderful, successful, amazing kids and grow up to be amazing people. That's it. (laughs) I was like, you know, we just need to have this talk because it's like the fire inside of me is everything I do. I want to share that because I didn't, I didn't have this wonderful of a view five years ago. I remember just feeling like, well, our life is never going to be normal, you know, and my kid is going to have this terrible life. Y'all Nate is the happiest person I know in the entire world. He has such a joy. He is unbelievably smart. There is so much to him that I could go on and on and on. And I do. I tell you guys all the time how amazing he is. He has changed me for the better. And I know that he's helped me more than I will ever help him. And I just want other families to see that. I just want other families to see this side of autism because the negative stuff gets shown a lot more and there is negative stuff, but I just feel like with any kid, there's positives and negatives. And the word autism has brought about so much help and support and love. And I think that, um, people are understanding it a lot more, even in, even in the, like, you know, you go out to a store, people understand when you say, oh, he has autism. I am never afraid to tell someone that because if Nate's having a meltdown or he's doing something a little different than most kids, if I tell people, oh, he has autism, they immediately understand why he's acting that way. And not that every kid with autism acts a certain way. They're all different. It's a spectrum. But I think people are understanding it more. So 
That's why I share that Nate has autism. That's why if I talk about autism, I put it in the title. I tag the heck out of it because I want, if anything I do on this channel, I just want to help other moms not feel the way I felt five years ago and help them um, just have hope that God created their child. He doesn't make mistakes. And... <laughs> Mark's like, enough, mom. God doesn't make mistakes, and he gave you your child for a reason, and all you can do is love them, support them, cheer them on, all the things. So, there's my soapbox. <laughs> I love y'all. We're going to go into Walmart. It's white outside. We are home. Hey, my salad. And now I'm going to do some laundry. I just laid Mark down. It's right at noon. I did not rock him. I just laid him down and he's laying there. He's not asleep. He's laying there. So we'll see what happens. I'll let y'all you, know. <laughs> um, I was also thinking, I hope what I said in the car, everybody understood. And I'm not saying that if you have, I know there are lots of families that struggle and, um, you know, their kid is nonverbal or they don't wish things were different. There are times I wish Nate didn't have autism. I think, you know, I mean, my brother-in-law is um, nonverbal autistic and I know the pain and um, the frustration that brings. And so I'm not saying that. I'm not trying to diminish that is what I'm saying. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. I hope y'all know what I meant. Um, but I do want to bring in awareness that even, even if it, you are the worst case, your kid is the worst case, you know, on the very end of the spectrum or whatever, God still has a purpose for them. And um, he gave them to you for a reason. And he will see you through. And all you can do is love your kid and celebrate them. And um, doesn't mean everything's always going to be easy, but God does promise to go with us. And I just want to offer hope and to show hope to others because, like I said, five years ago when Nate was diagnosed, it, it was really scary. Even though I had, you know, my in-law who had been through it and um, lots of other people that came and tried, you know, to share their story with us and stuff, it's still scary. So, anyway community around you does help it definitely helps so i'm gonna do some laundry i'm always doing laundry i got david and i's laundry i do like once a week and it's like two loads usually once a week the kids i do their laundry just about every day nate goes through a lot of clothes because if anything gets wet on him at all he takes them off and um so i have to wash them because I guess, well, I, I try to catch them before they go in the dirty clothes if they're just, like, been only on them for, like, 10 minutes and he spilled some water or something. Or it got wet on the sink or whatever, but he goes through a lot of clothes. And then, of course, the baby goes through a ton of clothes. He refuses to wear a bib. And if I put a bib on him, he, like, screams and pulls it off. So, I've gotten pretty good about feeding him without getting a mess. But, anyway, now he's starting to fuss down there. I just need him to take a nap today. Please, Lord. Please. I'm going to go do some laundry and hopefully he'll settle down. And then when he gets settled, I'm going to edit. Because that's been going well editing during the day instead of waiting until the night. Layla's over here eating her food. So I'll catch y'all in a little bit. Okay, y'all. So I was in here doing laundry and he screamed a pretty good amount of time. But now he's asleep. I know you can't really tell, but he's asleep. He's definitely not crying anymore. He cried for about 10 or 15 minutes, which was like brutal to my heart. If you're a mom, you know, but he did it. Yesterday, he cried for like an hour and a half. Not straight. I don't do that, but still, we're making really great progress. Gives me hope for the nighttime. So anyway, I've got most everything done here. I just need to put up Lucy's clothes and I'll be done with the laundry and I can start editing. And then we have like two hours before I have to get Lucy. So that'll come like that. 
probably by the time he wakes up, it'll be about time to get her. So, yay. I hope he takes a really good long nap because he needs it so bad. <laughs> He's so tired. So, anyway, I'm going to edit and I'll definitely check in with y'all in a little bit. Hey guys. Okay, it's now the end of the night. It has been a long, long night. Um, Mark has been so fussy. I think he's just really overtired and whatever tooth situation is going on or whatever the problem is, I have no idea why he's so fussy. It's just been, he's at that stage where he's really clingy and he's really whiny and he's really busy. My head has been hurting tonight. I haven't had a headache in a while, but I think it's just the constant whininess that he's been tonight. It's just Anyway, I've got a terrible headache, so I got everybody to bed. David got home late, so he's just walking in the door once I had everybody asleep. So, um, it's, it's always good when it's a busy day at the pizza place, but it really sucks when he's not here because, man, the head is pounding. Um, anyway, so I did make um, taco soup. I will link my recipe down below. I did make a video. It's a couple years old about how I make my taco soup. The only thing different I did tonight was I did it with ground chicken instead of ground beef. I've also made it with ground turkey before. You can use anything. I've even made it vegetarian with no meat and it always turns out good. So the ground chicken was good. It was really good. So, um... Mark ate a bunch of it too. It's a little bit, has a little bit of a spice to it because not, I wouldn't say it's spicy, but I did use Rotel, like one can of Rotel in there. So it has a little bit of a kick, but he loved it. So anyway, okay, sorry. So at this point in like the weight loss journey I've been in, I have lost about 34 pounds or so since July. Um, and I don't know. I've just been thinking a lot about like the culture that we live in and how people are so nice to you when you lose weight. Do you guys experience that? I read a quote um, I posted on Instagram um, that really just hit home with me when I was just looking through Facebook. So I want to see what you guys think. Um, it says, it's from this, somebody posted it and I guess it's been shared. When I lost over 100 pounds, everyone suddenly loved me. Everyone thought I was gorgeous. Everyone thought I was powerful. I can assure you being congratulated for weight loss feels just like your greatest fear combined, confirmed. You have to be thin to be valuable to the world, and it sucks. And I, I've been at lots of different sizes, um, but I do think people treat you differently if you're at a heavier size. Maybe it's just my imagination. Um, but I do think that people treat you differently if you're bigger than other people. And I just was thinking a lot. I'm not saying I don't want to lose weight because I, I want to be healthy and I want to be comfortable and I want to be, you know, a good role model for my daughter and all the things. But I don't know, like just thinking like I don't have to be a size 10 to be valuable to the world and God doesn't see me like that, like and I just want to share with you, if you've ever felt like that, or if you're feeling like that now, God says you're valuable and you're worthy now. You don't have to lose any weight. It doesn't matter if you're 400 pounds or you're, you know, 300 pounds or 200 pounds. Like, you are a person and you're valuable and you're loved. And the culture we live in is so sick. Um, and we glorify the people who are size twos or whatever, like, what does it matter? We're all different shapes and sizes. And I think as long as you're, if you're happy with yourself and you know, you're in a healthy place for yourself, um, who cares what other people think? But I do think that people, I mean, I've gotten down, you know, to my goal weight or whatever before. And I do think people just really are nicer to you when you're that, when you're that size. And, um, you know, I don't know. I think weight is a very poor predictor of health a lot of times too, because I know people who, you know, don't eat healthy at all, but yet they're skinny. Like, 
you know, does that mean they're healthier? You know, I've always struggled with my weight. I've been very honest with that. I've always struggled with it since a teenager. So, um, I don't know. I always go on these like, oh, you know, I'm going to lose all this weight and I'm going to be happy. I can tell you, like I've gotten down to goal weight before. It doesn't instantly make you happy and solve all your problems. So until you, I feel like until I can learn to be happy and to be content with who I am, regardless of what I look like on the outside, then I'm never going to have the joy and I'm never going to feel fulfilled or confident. Um, yeah, I may look good in a pair of jeans or whatever, but that doesn't, that's not who I am on the inside. I just was thinking about that tonight and, um, really appreciating my body for all it has done and stop like hating it. Like I really just want to stop hating it and embrace it. And, you know, I could still choose to get healthy and do things to help my body, but not abuse it and like want to change it all the time. So I don't know if this is making any sense. It's been a very emotional vlog. We talked about autism today. Now we're talking about weight loss. Um, but I'm just, I'm just sick of like the constant. I promise you it's coming this new year. There's going to be 101 million commercials and ads for weight loss for the new year. And all the people that have lost weight in the ads, the before and afters, they're all going to be happy and successful. And their life has suddenly gotten a lot better because they've lost weight. Um, but we all know <laughs> that that's not true. Um, your happiness and your joy and your confidence has to come from somebody, from I believe, from somebody else, from your Heavenly Father and knowing who you are in Christ. Um, because what you look like on the outside is so shallow. That is so shallow. So anyway, I just was thinking about that once I saw that, um, post on Facebook and, um, you know, tomorrow is my birthday. So I am looking forward to eating a few extra little treats and I think that's okay. Like I'm not going to feel bad about wanting a couple extra treats on my birthday and, um, yeah, just spending time with my family, relaxing a little bit and enjoying the foods I, I really love. And I don't eat a whole lot of every, you know, they're every now and then type foods. So anyway, I will carry you guys with me tomorrow. I'll show you everything we do. Um, I don't really know what all it's going to be yet, but I think it's going to be pretty laid back, but I'll definitely take you guys with me. Turn 34 tomorrow. It's just like my 30th birthday a couple days ago, right? <laughs> That's what it feels like. Time flies so fast, but because my head is hurting, I'm going to lay down and go to bed early. I've already got my editing done and um, the kids are quiet, so I'm going to sleep while I can. I've got my little partner in crime right here. Layla. She's already asleep, I think. So I love you guys. Thank you for all the support, love, encouragement, all the things. Like, I feel like you guys are my therapy. Like, I can just tell you guys anything. And you're always so supportive. And you listen. <laughs> and you leave me the nicest comments. And I always feel like someone can relate to what I'm saying. And when you find someone that can relate to what you're saying, you suddenly don't feel weird. Like, you feel, like, validated. Like, okay. I'm not alone. Somebody else gets it and it means a lot. So thank you all so much. I love y'all. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Please subscribe if you're new. I will see you all tomorrow.